What do you really need to get a job in AI and ML? What do you really need to transition into this field? Do you need a PhD or will a master's degree or a bachelor's degree be enough? What if you don't have any of these degrees? What do you do then? I looked at over 50 profiles of people on LinkedIn working on AI and machine learning to see what their backgrounds are. This included people with some experience and people with entry level roles. I explored what degrees they have and which sector they work in. Here's my take and analysis on it. Unfortunately, I will not be sharing the profiles of these people here on this video for obvious privacy reasons, but I highly encourage that you do your own research something like this to get a better idea. But I will guarantee that you will find this one thing to be very important. The one thing that you will need to land a permanent full-time position in a machine learning and AI role. I have uploaded that Excel file here called LinkedIn underscore profiles, where I've made a list of all the people with their experience, their background, the degrees they have, and all the information that we actually need to do our analysis here. So I'm gonna plug this in to to a collab notebook, just go over some of these important metrics and see what sort of experience they have, what sort of degrees they have. And now just be aware that a lot of the people that I've added are from my network or somehow related to my field, which is chemistry and chemical engineering. So maybe my LinkedIn search results are biased in terms of finding me people who are close to what I do and what I'm interested in. So just be aware of that. And there are a lot more caveats that you should keep in mind, which is why I want you to to do a similar analysis like this. And if you need, I can put this Google Colab on a shared link. Do let me know in the comments below if you're interested in that. Um, that way you can use this particular code to do your own analysis. Okay, so let's get started. First, what I'm gonna do is just import some of these libraries that we need. I'm gonna read in the data set here. And just to show you what columns we have, these are the columns that we have. We've got name, degree level, major, experience in years, work sector, which is whether they're in the industry or whether they're in academia. Just a fair note, most of the folks are in industry. And then we've also got uh, two columns called postdoc and intern. It tells us whether their experience came from from a postdoc or whether it was an internship. So let's just quickly look at what this looks like. So first I'm gonna just drop the names column cause I don't wanna reveal the names of these people, but they are real people. You'll just have to trust me on that. But I'm pretty sure if you do your own research, you will end up with pretty similar results. So again, just looking at all the columns, these are the columns that we have. And we've got a shape of our data frame of about 54 comma six, which is basically telling us this is a small data set of 54 people, but nevertheless, I think there is one important thing that is very glaring. So there's 33 folks with a PhD, 19 folks with a master's degree, and a couple of folks had some BS degree. I don't know what those BS degrees are, but you know, we'll see. So this is just a distribution. As you can see, almost three fourths of the folks out of the 54 people have a PhD and about one third have an MS degree and a couple of folks with a BS degree. Looking at where these people are working right now after their experience and after earning their degree, I've found only three people in academia and about 51 folks in the industry. So I think that's a good sign, but it's very unfortunate for folks in academia because I don't know if you know this, but after PhD, it is really hard to get into academia. So I'm not surprised to see most people moving to the industry. So this is just a distribution of showing that most people are in the industry. Then we're just separating out our data sets into master's PhD and the BS degree. Then we have a class for carrying out some analysis and pie charts. So let's just look at that. You can go over the class if you need to. This is not the video for that. What we're interested in is how these distributions matter. What do we need to get into AI and ML? So just looking at folks with a PhD degree, this is what we see. There we go. As I said, my profile has more folks in science, the pure science field. So there's a lot of chemistry folks, biology folks, and physics. And you do have folks in computer science, statistics, um, and some engineering courses as well, biomedical engineering, chemical engineering, materials engineering, mechanical engineering seems to be a pretty big chunk as well. So what you will see here is ultimately everything is in the domain of physics, chemistry, and biology. In terms of physics, you see things like mechanical engineering, you see physics here, you also see something like a little bit of materials, uh, and then you've got chemistry, chemical engineering, and inorganic chemistry and things like that. Then 
you've also got biology, medical, biomedical engineering kind of overlapping. Then you've also got statistics, mathematics, and also data science. I saw somewhere, can't see it here. But the odd thing was there was, I think, one person with a linguistics degree. So it's for a PhD level, the degree where you get the degree or what major you get your degree in seems to be pretty broad when compared to someone with a master's degree. Because when we go to someone with a master's degree, what you will see is more often than not, they have a computer science degree. Almost two thirds of the folks have computer science degree and the rest have things like data science. You see some electrical engineering and some systems engineering and things like that. Now there are more degrees than this. This is just a subset, but I wanted to show you in terms of degrees, how degrees matter. Like I don't see many people with something like a chemistry degree like me with a masters masters in chemistry going into something like machine learning and AI. And I feel like a very good reason for this is that they expect people to know how to write code, how to be a programmer. Because one other thing that we were able to see was most people had a prior work experience as software developers or something in software engineering. You know, I wish I knew more about that field, but I don't. Um, even if people didn't have direct experience in machine learning, they had some experience experience building software and things like that. So that is very important to have, especially if you're only going for a master's degree, then if that's your way of getting into AI and ML, then go straight to computer science or something related to that. Because if you want to get into AI and ML and you haven't picked your major yet, that seems to be like the most attractive way to get into AI and ML. And if you're in a PhD program like I was, something in pure science or you know something completely unrelated to um, computer science, then PhD is, seems to be the way to go. Okay, let's look at those two people with a BS degree, right? And it turns out they're both computer scientists. So not a surprise here because you do need your coding skills to be at the best level possible. Now that we know what degrees are, like how the distribution in AI and ML is when it comes to degrees, the clear indication here is if you're in a master's program, your best bet is through data science and computer science. If you're in a PhD program, you can do pretty much any other pure science type of work and also have experience in AI and ML and then get into the field. One thing about PhD or graduates with a PhD is that a lot of them go on to do postdocs and postdocs is kind of like an internship. Um, it's also a way of getting exposed to a particular field, establishing your expertise in that field. And from this chart, we see clearly that 45% of PhDs go on to do a postdoc. And this is the postdoc very specific to machine learning. So I made sure that these candidates were um, doing postdocs in the field of machine learning. So that's when I put them down as yes, they did their postdoc to get experience in machine learning. So there's about 45% of them. But one thing that I will show you soon is that the folks who didn't do a postdoc, they did something like an internship to get the experience they needed before they went into machine learning, before getting a full-time permanent position as a machine learning engineer or anything related to AI and ML. So you will see that if I go ahead and plot this second chart, 36% of PhDs got an internship. So, and they are pretty much people who did not do their postdoc to see whether or not PhD graduates had any experience before getting into AI and ML, this chart will show clearly that 75 or 76% of them had some experience either through internships or postdocs before they got their permanent AI ML roles. And about 24% did not have any experience outside of academia, and they went on to get their AI ML roles without having to do any postdocs or internships. So just to do some statistics here, we see clearly that the number of years you need, like the years of experience you need for a PhD is about, the mean is about 1.64, and the median is about one year. So technically you need at least one year or one and a half years of experience as a postdoc or as an intern working in machine learning and AI to land a permanent position as an AI and machine learning engineer. It's that simple if you're doing a PhD. Now moving to the folks who had only a master's degree and just to make sure that they don't get postdoc experience, 
because masters folks don't do postdocs. Uh, they're not qualified for that. So let's just look at how many of them did postdocs. None of them did. That's not a surprise. Master students do not do postdocs. They don't need to. So let's see how many of them did internships because that's also important. And you can see out of 19 master's students, 18 of them had some internship experience and one of them did not, which is kind of rare. You can see that even with a master's degree, you need experience. If you're not willing to do an internship or if you're not willing to do a postdoc, then this field is hard. It's going to be very hard to get into. So if you have a master's degree, your best shot is an internship. If you have a PhD degree, your best shot is a postdoc or an internship while you're doing your PhD. So number one advice, if you're doing your PhD, apply for internships as you're in your graduate program. Use that internship experience to then get into a permanent position. So only one person who did get a master's degree did not do internships. So try not to be that one person because it's really hard. Believe me, pretty much everyone else should have some sort of experience. And that's what we see here in this chart. And you can see that one person without any experience getting a permanent position. So you can see that it is rare. One out of 19 people, at least in the people that I saw, had or did not have any, any experience. So just getting some statistics again on how many years of experience you need. With a master's degree, it turns out the mean is actually 1.84 or 1.2 years of experience, whereas for median is like one year, which is same as PhD. So technically the years of experience you need is kind of lower with a master's degree. So that begs the question, doesn't it? Like, do you really need a PhD to get a job in AI and ML? Because number one, PhDs take five years to complete. Masters is hardly one or two years or maybe three years, but you also need less experience with internships. And that seems to be the fastest way to get your foot in the door when it comes to transitioning to AI and ML. That master's degree seems to be the most important thing. So do consider that. And then looking at folks with a bachelor's degree, it's not a surprise that both of them had work experience before they got into the permanent role. And just to get it, um, get a view of what they did, they both did internships, obviously no postdocs. So both of them did internships and at an average, their experience, internship experience was double that of anyone with a master's degree. I don't think this is a surprise because if you have a BS degree, people would want to see you show more experience. So master's does help you when it comes to that. You can spend either an extra year doing an internship or you can spend that year doing your master's degree. And I think master's degree seem to be the sure way of getting into this field. And let's look at what that means for everyone. So just looking at the experience, or everyone in our data set, only nine people did not have any work or prior experience before getting into AI and ML. About 45 of them did have experience. That's over 80% who had some experience before they got their permanent position. So ultimately the goal is this, it's not just learning AI and ML through some courses or boot camps. It's also establishing yourself as a credible person in this field. So you really need to show that you're experienced in this. Now, believe me, one year, two years, it's not good enough of an experience. You still have a lot to learn when you're two, three years, maybe five years into the field. And with the way the pace at which it's growing, you probably need way more years before you can call yourself an expert, which is why I don't call myself an expert in this field yet. So I'd like to be, so that's the goal. But this video is for people who need to really understand that you need some sort of credible experience. And the way to go is with internships and postdocs. These are two aspects that really give you the experience that you need. So use them to your advantage. So that's my final point to say that experience matters big time. So from this brief analysis, you can see that work experience matters. And that's the single most deciding factor when it comes to hiring or getting hired into a permanent position in AI and ML. You need to show them something credible, something that is impactful, which is why I have this video right here for you that will give you more insights into how you can produce a meaningful effort and a meaningful work while you're doing your boot camps and workshops in machine learning. With that being said, I will see you in the next one. Take care.